Pastor Tan, and um, I'll be hosting uh, and facilitating the session. Um, but we're going to just wait a couple of minutes. Um, you know, people are often kind of late at the UN. So let's just wait um, like maybe two or three minutes. Um, and we expect to have a lot of people that will join us. Um, so everyone, if you want to maybe just uh, introduce yourself in the chat. Just tell us your name and uh, you know where you're from, which country, which duty station organization, um, and then we'll get started soon. So yes, just feel free to just put um, things in the meeting chat at the side. And we'll start in one minute. Uh, Signa, you have a PowerPoint slides, right? Are you able to um, share the screen? Of course. I just want to just double check that it's working fine. Yes. Can you see? The screen? Uh, we can see. Uh, we can yeah. see. Perfect. Yes, that looks great. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's perfect. Yes, thank you. Wow, hey, it's really well, from all over the world here. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have, um, you know, this is the UN, so uh, <laughs> this is really open to everybody uh, in the United Nations family, and so we have different organizations that come in. Um, so the good things, everyone's probably interested in their health and improving their health, and that's why they're here. Um, but yeah, we keep it really open and to everybody, like staff. You know, physicians, anybody, yeah. Amazing. Great, welcome everyone. Okay, so I'm gonna get started and um how do you pronounce your last name again? Svanfelt. <laughs> Sorry? Svanfelt. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> Sven I, my name does not go well internationally. It's very, very Swedish. It's a oh, okay, okay. I will just say your first name, Signe, right? Yeah, Signe. That's perfect. Signe. That's okay, all right, got it. Okay, and we're recording this, and you know, uh, we will probably send it out to others. We also have a YouTube channel that we'll put it on. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. So um Welcome everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon to wherever you are. And we're really happy to uh, present again um, our public health conversation series. So today's topic is revitalizing wellness, the vital role of food and nutrition in holistic health, and is led by Signe, who is the lead nutritionist at LifeSum. So uh, if you guys don't know already, um, you know, we in the public health section in Dimash um, had offered um, LifeSum uh, program. It's an app that allows you to monitor your food intake and exercise habits and gives you personalized feedback and recipes and meal plans to suit your lifestyle. So um, it's a limited uh, number of licenses that we have, um, but it's kind of first come first basic that, that we've already shared with everyone. Um, and I hope that you know many of you who are using it are also uh, joining us today. Um, so just to give you a, some background of Signe, our expert speaker today. Uh, so she's a highly accomplished food science and nutrition specialist. Uh, her academic background is from Uppsala University, where she earned a bachelor's and master's degree in food service and nutrition. Uh, she has a deep passion for the intricate relationship between food and its impact on physical and mental well-being, and she plays a leading role in guiding and enlightening the life sum community. Um, she believes that food is not just sustenance, but a powerful tool for enhancing overall quality of life. And she has a comprehensive understanding of the science between behind food and nutrition. And this really helps her to um, help life sum and help all of us today. Uh, so today's presentation will focus on what it means to be healthy in the mind, body, and spirit, and how to create a balanced, healthy life based on your unique needs with a focus on uh, body positivity and body neutrality. Um, again, just to say that uh, our partnership with LifeSum is a pilot program and all licenses have been uh, claimed at this time. 
Um, but you know, feel free to pay attention to any announcements that will come up about more additional license in the future. Um, we're going to have a short presentation by Signet and then we'll follow it up by a question and answer session. So please feel free to put uh, in the chat any questions that come to mind. Um, and so without further ado, I'll pass over to Signe and uh, also just to say that this is being organized by the Dimash Public Health Section. Uh, I am Dr. Esther Tan, I'm in charge of this section, and we're really happy uh, to focus on health promotion for all UN staff around the world. So over to you, Signe. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for the really nice introduction. And welcome to this webinar. So yeah, we're from LiveSum. Uh, and yeah, you got a little introduction about me. I'm the lead nutritionist at LifeSum, and I have a huge passion for helping people towards a healthier living and guidance on how to make more conscious and more nutritious choices. Uh, so we are from LifeSum, and LifeSum is all about nutrition and helping people towards a healthier life through better eating. Uh, we are healthy eating simplified. So LifeSum is a digital nutrition platform where we're helping over 60 million users globally to live a healthier life through better eating. And we have uh, our app exists in 11 different languages, so we really have users all over the world. I mean, I can say all of you are from so many different places. So yeah, hopefully we'll have more languages um, in the future, but this is what we have for now. So as I said, like LifeSum is all about helping people to a healthier life through better eating in a safe and sustainable way. So we really believe in finding a way that works for you long term. It's not about short fixes or quick fixes or just having a diet for a month or so. It's about finding habits that really fits your lifestyle that you can have for the rest of your life. Uh, so in the app, you insert your personal numbers and the potential goal if you have any weight related goal or if you just want weight maintenance. And then you insert your nutritional preferences and we will provide you with an individual recommendation based on that. And we also have a variety of different diets and meal plans, as, uh, as there was mentioning before too. Uh, so you can really find a way of eating that suits your preferred way, because we know that there's not one fits that uh, size fits all here. So it's really about finding your individual path that works for your lifestyle. So in the meal plans, we have like a, uh, pre-selected uh, meals uh, each day planned for you. So it can be for three weeks or for two weeks if you just want to like kickstart and try something new. Um, and we also have our own um, life score, which is a score based on your uh, habits. So each week after tracking, uh, you get uh, a new life score based on your habits. And then so it can be like from all from your intake of vegetable, fruit, fiber, sugar or exercise. Uh, or water intake. So each week you get a new score based on what you've tracked the previous week. So you get personalized feedback on what you're doing well and on which area you could improve. You can also get that life score by doing a health test. So answering questions of your previous habits or previous intake the last week. And we also have over a thousand nutritious and really easy to cook recipes in the app. And I can guarantee that you can find something that you will love there. Uh, it's all from breakfast to snacks, dinner, lunches, and like different smoothies, drinks. Uh, so it's it's really a little uh, treasure there. So let's dive into the topic of nutrition. Like, why is nutrition so important? Well, like our diet has an extremely, extremely large impact on our well-being, and a balanced diet throughout our life can lead to a decreased risk of overweight and obesity, as well as decreased risk for chronic diseases like diabetes type 2, cardiovascular diseases, bone diseases, and certain types of cancers. And what's really, really important to note here is that it's never, ever too late to start a healthy and balanced diet. And one growing problem um, worldly or globally uh, is in the Western world is overweight and obesity. And it, it's actually been tripled uh, since 1975. And currently around 53% of the population in Europe suffers from overweight. And with the prevalence of overweight and obesity, the risk of other diseases such as diabetes type 2, bone disease, cardiovascular diseases and certain types of cancer also increases. So this is really an issue that we need to pay attention to and we need to try to prevent. And that is important to note that there are preventative tools against overweight and obesity uh, with the right knowledge and a balanced and healthy diet and regular physical activity. We can prevent this and also uh, reverse it. So that's like LifeSum is here to help you um, along that 
journey. So what is health? And we know that nutrition is important, but what is health? And I mean, healthy is not just the absence uh, of uh, overweight and obesity. Uh, it includes so many different aspects, such as our mental health and our physical health, that, that we feel good in our bodies and are able to do everything that we want to do in life. It's also really important that we get enough sleep and rest so our body can recover and get the amount of rest needed. And it also includes having that balanced and healthy diet and a healthy relationship towards food. And what I mean with that is that like the how we think about food and how much we think about food, like it shouldn't take over. Like it's not the most important thing of all. Like it's so many other things that matter as well. So it shouldn't get all of the focuses from us. But it, of course, it, it is of importance, but it shouldn't take too much uh, of our thoughts and efforts and resources. Um, because then it can be in an unhealthy way too. So we need to find a balance there as well. And to be healthy also includes having enough energy. So we're able to do everything that we love in life. So we need to have enough like power in our bodies and uh, minds so we can do everything that uh, fills us with energy. And it's also really important that we keep our stress levels low as too much stress in our lives can lead to various negative health consequences. So, I mean, all of these aspects are super important when it comes to health. Like it's not enough if just one of these boxes are ticked, like everything uh, needs to get the attention needed. And then we have holistic health, and that is the attempt to balance the whole living being in mind, body and spirit so that health status can be optimized and ill health can be minimized. So that's like paying attention to our whole self. So it's really important, like it's not enough to just feel good in one part, like everything needs to connect there. So what is the connection between holistic health and nutrition? And as we mentioned before, like if you have any questions alongside, like when I talk, just like type them in the chat and I can answer them uh, later on. But if we start off with the body and uh, the connection between nutrition, like it's so connected in so many ways and really strongly as well. So the food and nutrients and the meals and the energy that we put into our body is really vital for our physical health. I mean, both short term, because we need the energy and nutrients uh, for a bodily function. Uh, like even when we, if we just lie down completely still for a whole day, we still need energy and nutrients to survive because our body needs to uh, support all of the bodily functions that we have. And we also need the energy and nutrients uh, to be able to do everything we love in life, just like walking or moving or uh, running around, like we need more energy and nutrients um, to support that. Uh, and it's also vital for long term for our bodies, um, as what we put in our bodies have a huge impact on disease prevention or prevalence or also as longevity and overall well-being. So the body and nutrition and food is super strongly connected. So food is so important in so many ways. Like, first of all, it's in extremely important because we wouldn't survive uh, without food. And most of you probably uh, are aware of that. Uh, but it also ensures that we have like a stable energy level throughout the day. And we probably have noticed like some days when we have been a bit like bad on planning and might not have uh, that regular uh, food intake that we're used to. I mean, our energy levels drop quick, pretty quick, quickly. And uh, some of us can actually get like a bit hangry and <laughs> angry when we're not getting enough food. So it's really important for uh, to make sure that we have stable energy levels throughout the day. And food also provides us with essential nutrients. And that's because essential nutrients are the nutrients that we can't create ourselves in the body. So we need to get them from the food and beverages that we consume. So we need those nutrients in order for our body to function properly, like both so it doesn't like break and stuff, but also like to just maintain the different functions that we have in our body. And these nutrients include both macronutrients, which is protein, carbohydrates and fats, but also micronutrients, which is the nutrients that we need in smaller amounts, but they are still extremely important. So those are the vitamins and minerals. So those are the things that we need to uh, provide our body with. So the food and the nutrients ensure that the body and all its our organs works as supposed to, and both short term, but also long term. And food also contributes to normal growth and development. And that's of extra importance for those that are in a growing phase in life, such as children and adolescents. But it's also important for us older um, people because our, our cells constantly renews and we need um, those energy and nutrients to support that function as well. 
And as I like, I can't stress this enough, but food can also help to prevent disease, which is super important, like bone disease, for instance. If you're not getting enough vitamins and minerals and protein for our bones to like stay strong, like they will break eventually. So it's super important for all of our bodily function, uh, both long and uh, short term. And food is also extremely important for our productivity and performance. I mean, we, as I mentioned before, like if we're not getting enough food or not regular meals, um, it will be noticed, uh, both like if at work uh, we won't be able to concentrate and perform as, as we're used to, and also like uh, when it comes to physical activity, like we know that if we fuel our body right, we will get better results. Um, so it's uh, food is really important for us in so many different ways. And then we have the mind. And our mind and nutritional intake is also really strongly connected. I mean, not only does it, uh, a regular energy intake keep our mood stabilized throughout the day, uh, but a healthy nutritious diet can also lead to an increased mental well-being and increased mood. And it can also lead to a decreased risk of developing cognitive diseases such as Alzheimer's, depression and dementia. So a nutritious and balanced diet is super important for our mental and our mind as well. And then we have the spirit. Uh, and I mean, how can food and nutrition be connected to our spirit? I mean, there are so many feelings connected to food. Food is not just nutritious and like our nutrients. And I mean, that's the chemical part of it and what we need in our body. But I mean, food is so much more than that. I mean, we have so many feelings connected to it. And it can be all from joy and memories or specific places that we have you know, like connections to certain foods. And the meals are really a time when we gather our loved ones and sit together and enjoy the food uh, that we eat, which is super important for our well-being as well. I mean, it can be all from lunches and having a break at work with your dear colleagues or to like large family holiday dinners where you do traditions that you always done and eating the same thing or like having a Friday dinner with your friends. Um, so it's like it's so strongly connected to feelings and when it comes to food. And our culture is so uh, connected to the food and meals we eat, and like can be from religious reason, but also just simple culture aspects. Uh, so the social aspect of food is is so so important for us uh, and our emotions and our spirit. So what is a healthy diet? Like I've been talking about the importance of a healthy diet, but what what does it actually mean? So like the, the core thing here is to have like a healthy uh, diet with a varied intake of nutrient dense food. And what I mean with nutrient dense food is that you should have a lot of these good nutrients that our body needs. So vitamins, minerals, protein, fiber and healthy fats. Uh, so, I mean, that includes vegetables and uh, legumes, which is beans and lentils, um, fruit and berries and whole grains. And what all of these food groups have in common is that they are very rich in vitamins and minerals, and they're also high in dietary fiber. And dietary fiber is a really, really important nutrient that many of us are not getting enough of. So we should aim at having around 30 grams of dietary fiber per day. And that's a great thing that you can also track in the Lifesome app if you use it. And then you can see that you hit your daily recommendations. And fiber is needed to, uh, it's good for parentheses. Um, it aids digestion and is really important for our gut health. It can also help us maintain stable blood sugar levels. Um, so, I mean, fiber is really good in so many ways. It helps us stay fuller for longer as well. So it's, it's a great thing to include in your different meals. And a really important part is also um, to eat unsaturated healthy fats. Uh, and that's found in plant foods such as nuts, seeds, olive oil, avocado and more. Uh, and unsaturated fat is really important for our heart health and can also help to prevent disease. So if you swap the saturated fat, which is the fats found in animal products such as uh, butter, cream, cheese and meat, to unsaturated fat instead, we can actually decrease the risk of cardiovascular diseases. So always aim to like choose unsaturated fat sources uh, over saturated fat sources. And a really important part of a healthy diet is also to get enough protein. And, and protein is needed for so many different functions that uh, muscles and cell creation and hormones, enzymes. So protein is really vital for us as well. And many people think that protein only exists in animal products, such as like meat, uh, eggs, fish, uh, poultry. But protein exists in so many different food items um, apart from that. 
So it exists in beans and lentils, tofu, grains and nuts. I mean, whole grain pasta has 12 grams of protein per 100 grams. So you can get enough protein easily on a plant-based diet as well. But what's important is to vary the intake uh, of what you're eating. Because not, not everything, if by just eating kale, which is super nutritious, but, but if you would only eat kale alone, you would not get all of the nutrients um, that you need. So you need to have a varied intake and get everything a little bit from everywhere. Uh, so that's really important to have in mind. But then we also have some food that we need in smaller amount, uh, and those are the nutrient poor and energy dense foods, such as candy, cookies, soft drinks, chips, ice cream and energy drinks. And the reason we should aim at eating these uh, foods in smaller amounts is because they are nutrient poor. So they often contain a lot of energy, but very little nutrients. So by eating this, a lot of these foods, we either tend to get too few nutrients in, or we exceed our energy requirements, which, which like, after time uh, could lead to overweight and obesity. And they also tend to be high in sugar and saturated fat and sodium, uh, which all, when having an excessive intake, are correlated with an increased risk of variety of diseases, such as cardiovascular diseases, again, and diabetes type 2 and obesity. So we should always aim at having um, less of these different um, foods. But with that said, I mean, there's not one single food item that is so healthy, so we should eat it all the time. And nor is something so unhealthy, so we never can eat it. So, I mean, the key here is have to have a balanced and healthy diet in line with your individual energy requirement. And your individual energy requirement is also something that can be a bit tricky to know. I mean, maybe we're just always eating as we always have been doing, but it can be a really like fun way to also try the life map. And you, if you didn't get the account now uh, in this round, I mean, you can still create a free account there um, and um, use it. And you don't get all of the features, but you can still like uh, create an account and start using it and see what your individual energy requirement would be. So that's it's pretty interesting and fun to try. So when speaking about uh, balance as well, like it's highly important in our lives in so many ways. I don't know how many times I was saying the word balance in this presentation, but it's really a key aspect of uh, finding a healthy way of living. But we should really aim at finding a balance in our lives where everything gets enough focus. So, I mean, the pie chart here, like it can be like, it, of course, it's different um, parts for everyone's individual life that are of importance, but these are just examples. So I just want to show that like it's so important that everything in life gets the time and focus it needs. So we don't have an unbalance there because if we, for, for example, would think about like food and or body and weight and like it too much, like it will take uh, time and efforts from other parts of our life that might deserve more attention from us. So it's so important to find a balance there. And of course, yes, like food and weight management can be needed to live a healthy life, but it shouldn't take over too much focus. Um, so it's really important to have a healthy relationship towards food and yourself and give everything in your life uh, the time and the resource that it, it, uh, it needs. And that's really important for you to feel the best. So make sure every every little pie um, piece in your life get every um, all of the thought it deserves. And I can't stress this enough too. Like having a healthy relationship to food is so important. Uh, I mean, we should think about that we need the food in our lives. We need the food to live. Well, like we shouldn't live to focus on what to eat. So it's so important to have a balanced and healthy relationship towards food, and so it doesn't get over, like um, get out of control, which can be unhealthy and unsustainable and too extreme. So finding a healthy relationship towards food is really important. And we should also think about our bodies in a nice and kind way. I mean, we have one body our entire life and we should try to do our best to respect and take care of it. And many people think that who they are is based on how they look or how their body appears to others. But I mean, we all are so different. We have different starting points. We have lived different lives. We have different, like different resources and different everything. So of course, like we will look, look different and how we look does not define who we are. We are so, so much more than just our look and of our bodies. So, I mean, instead of focusing on how body looks in the mirror or how it looks on a picture, I mean, focus on how body uh, feel and how they can help us achieve what we want in life instead. That's so much more uh, important. 
And yeah, as, as I said, like we have one body and we should remind ourselves that like we need to ensure to take care of that body. And uh, one way of doing so is to provide it with all of the energy and nutrients it needs to thrive. So our bodies are so much more than how we look. Uh, it's our ability to move and to do things to, we love and to spend time uh, with the people we love. So share your body and I mean, fuel it with nutritious food uh, and make it feel as good as it possibly can. And that was what I had. Do you have any questions? Great, thank you so much, Signe. Um, so we'll now move over the question time. And um, I don't see, let me see, are there any questions here? Okay, we have, question. yeah. yes, we have a one about coffee. So is coffee healthy? What are the effects of coffee on the body and the usage amount and frequencies per day? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. Uh, what do you it's think about point. coffee? Yeah. yeah, it's definitely a good question and a question I get quite often. And what we should uh, remember when it comes to caffeine, which is found in coffee, it's so uh, individual how much caffeine we can tolerate. But it's, it's generally considered safe to consume around 400 milligrams of caffeine per day. So that's around four cups of coffee per day. Uh, so that's a safe consumption. But we all, all our bodies like react differently uh, to uh, different amounts of caffeine. So for some that can be really um, like too much and you can like start feel dizzy and nauseous and a bit shaky. So you can really feel like you need to find your individual tolerance level. And for some, it can also like some can drink coffee late at night and the sleep won't be affected, while others like can't drink it after after 12 o'clock in the day. So you need to find like your individual tolerance level and when you can drink it and not. Um, but it's not like it's not. Uh, it's also like a definition like what is what is healthy like for some it can be really good to drink coffee before they run because then they can run longer uh, because it enhances the uh, endurance training but so finding your uh, tolerance level is really really key uh, but it, coffee doesn't really provide you any um, essential nutrients in that way uh, mm -hmm. but it's uh, you can definitely con consume coffee in a healthy and balanced diet mm -hmm. i drink a lot of coffee <laughs> All right. Next question is about intermittent fasting, which is one of the latest nutrition trends and a lot of people find it really helpful. What do you think about that and how, how would you recommend people use it or not? Yeah. So when it comes to like different diets and different way of eating, it's the same here. Like it's so individual. For some, this works amazing. They get like super focused at work if they, for instance, skip breakfast and stop eating um, like yeah, at night pretty early. And uh, if they fast like for, I don't know, 14 hours or 16 hours, um, and they can really like, they can really notice um, great effects on them. But for some, it doesn't work at all. I mean, it's all about your own individual lifestyle. Some people need breakfast you know, be, to be able to function during the day, and they eat more nutrients uh, if they have breakfast. And, and for some, it can be a really good way um, to manage their health. So it's like all about trying what fits your lifestyle and how it also affects your uh, the rest of the intake. Because some some that do intermittent fasting, then they get so starving uh, when, during lunch and then they just like eat everything they see instead and might not have a, like a super balanced intake. So finding a way that really works uh, for you is key here. Um, so if you do like what I want to say, like if you do intermittent fasting, like you can do it in so many safe ways as well. But then remember that you need to get all of the energy uh, requirement and nutrient requirement you have in a shorter time frame. So make sure then it's like even more important to make sure that each meal you have uh, is really balanced. So you get enough of everything. So mm -hmm. that's really important too. Thank you. Yeah, connected to that, I was um I was wanted to ask you something about like mindful eating. I feel like um you know, you're talking about how it's important to like kind of feel and know your own body, what works for you. But part of that, I feel like sometimes people rush to eating and then uh, they're not in touch with like their body and, and how they're thinking about it. No, I mean, that's really important too. Like we live such as like stressful lives now and it's so common that people just like eat something on the go or eat on their desks or, or while, while working or while watching TV. And that's quite... I'm not going to say dangerous, but it's not optimal uh, to do so. Like when we eat, we want to sit down, we want to focus on the meal. And I mean, preferably like sitting in a social context, context as well. Uh, it's really good for us. But you sit down at least, sit down, eat the meal, focus on the meal, chew the food properly and eat slowly. And like 
use all of your senses while eating too. Like it's not just about, you know, filling your body with fuel. It's about like feeling the taste, feeling the texture, feeling the smell. How does the food look like? All of those things are so important when it comes to meals and finding like connection to the meal. And then you also appreciate it. I mean, what if we spend like an hour cooking something and then we just eat it in two minutes? That's not appreciation for that uh, beautiful meal that you've done. So it's giving the food and uh, the meal the time it deserves is really important, I would mm -hmm. say. Great, thank you. Um, another question regards to nutrition supplements. Are there any good supplements that people should take? And, you know, what do you think about that? I mean, supplements is uh, it's, uh, quite of a tricky question to answer, like, general. Like, if you have a varied and balanced diet um, and you get all of them, then you will probably most likely get all of the nutrients that you need unless you have a deficiency or uh, any disease. But if you start to take away certain food groups from your intake, like for instance, if you don't eat anything from the animal uh, world, so if you're eating a completely plant-based diet, yes, then you might need to have uh, some supplementation to get all of the vitamins um, and minerals that you need because it can be tricky to get, for instance, enough B12 or iron. So finding um, that can be really important. But it's also good to like consult with a healthcare professional before starting to take uh, supplements because supplements have such a high doses uh, so it can be easy to like um, uh, take too much and get too high levels uh, in there. So like for if you eat everything and if you eat a varied and balanced diet, then you most likely won't need any supplements. But some certain groups uh, might uh, need supplements, mm -hmm. but always consult a healthcare professional before starting to take any. Yeah, and connected to that in your presentation, I, I get a sense that you have know, like having a variety of foods is really helpful and important. And like you said, there's actually no like good or bad food but I think like everything moderation you can try everything I mean that's kind of also my philosophy like the more variety yeah. the better what do you think yeah exactly I mean I think it's a good way that I also, uh, always use with my nephews and nieces is like try to put as many colors as you can on your plate because that's a great way an easy way to like then you get so many different uh, nutrients in there and an easy and fun way of doing so and that goes for adults too like try to have at least five colors uh, on your plate so it's a fun little challenge that you can like bring with you um, to always use and because it can be a really good way. Mm. Um, another question with regards to what is the role of food and weight loss? Like, you know, do you think it's uh, food is more important or versus exercise? What do you think? I mean, food is the key here. Uh, you can lose weight without exercising at all. Of course, exercise is so important for health in so many different uh, uh, aspect as well but you if you just want to lose weight that's like the food is your the key uh, opponent here uh, and I mean when we want if we want to lose weight the the thing is that we need to have a calorie deficit over a period of time and what's really important here is that you shouldn't have a too large calorie deficit because then it won't be sustainable then you will just feel deprived and then it likely will be like okay I have one week where I eat like way too less and then I will go like I feel too starving, so I will eat like the double the amount the next week. And then it will be like a yo-yo a thing that just goes back and forth. So here's really a key of finding a good and sustainable path. And that's really where Lifestone can help too. So we'd like, because we we don't promote like a too fast and rapid weight loss. We want a sustainable weight loss pace that lasts. Like, so it's, uh, it's healthy for you. Mm -hmm. And it's not like a specific food item that will help you lose weight. And of course, like certain diets might help people because it can be easy to do so. Uh, but I mean, overall, like having an energy deficit and eating the food you still love uh, is the most uh, sustainable way to go. And I also saw that the question asked what a keto diet is. And that's yeah, a diet. Keto and also meat yeah. only diet kind of thing. Yeah, like protein yeah, exactly. only diet. So the keto diet, if we start there, is where you eat an extremely low amount of carbs. You want to basically eliminate all carbs from your diet and put your body in ketosis, which means that instead of using the carbs and the, as fuel as our body usually wants, if so if carbs are available, that's the thing we use as energy. But if that's not available, our, our body starts using the fat as fuel instead. So it takes the fat from our body and through the liver it transforms to ketone bodies and that can be used as energy instead. Uh, and I mean, first of when doing so, like if starting a keto diet, people tend to lose weight pretty quickly, but it's also not, it's not a diet that works for all. I mean, for me, it could never, ever work. I'm, I love vegetables, fruit, root vegetables, and I want that in my life and I want whole grains. So it can be really tricky too to have a um, sustainable keto diet because we also need that fiber as I was talking about. And that can be quite challenging to get enough of on a keto diet. 
but it can be a good option if someone wants or needs to lose weight quickly. But it's it's um, it's really important there to find a balance and a healthy way to get like vegetables. You can eat certain vegetables there, like zucchini or like the low carbs like broccoli and stuff. So um, yeah, mm. it's it's not about a specific food item. It's more about finding a path that works. But we have mm -hmm. a keto diet in the Life's Map too uh, that you can try out if you want to. But it's not a diet that fits all, uh, as no no diet is. Mm -hmm. um, another question about um, is someone says very interesting to see this uh, pie chart on balance, but the issue is that for some of us it is all about food. Even when we are friends, we're family, or even a hobby is food. So what do we do? I, and I agree with that because I feel like sometimes like you mentioned, like you know, we should sit down, we should like sit with, um, you know, have social, and then. But then it's like sometimes it's all about food. Like you have coffee, you eat pastries, and then you have lunch, you have dinner, and then it's nonstop the whole day. It's food, food the whole day. So how should we control it? Like should portion sizes or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, I think we should like find and I don't know, like if it's it's of course like it's so many, especially like if you are with family, like when you're on holiday, like it's a breakfast and then you have the lunch and then the yeah, snacks and then exactly. the afternoon drinks and then you have dessert. like it's so many things connected to food. And that's I mean, it's OK to have periods when it is like that, too. I mean, we are just humans. And if that brings us joy, that's then so be it. Like we need to be happy and finding a way that that makes our life uh, feel valuable mm -hmm. um, but I mean it's also important that we get we we'll get time for other things as well <clears throat> like if you if you know that okay this day we're just going to have like meals constantly well find some breaks go out and play with the kids go and take a walk do do some other things too like uh, my, my hobby is also food I cook all the time but I also love to exercise and I also love to be with my friends and do other things so you know, finding a balance there is really important. Uh, mm. And I mean, f uh, when it comes to food, it doesn't need, mean that we need to eat all of the food all the time uh, either. I mean, we can still prepare food and be around food. Um, and I mean, it can be tricky, of course, especially in certain s social contexts when it's like expected of us to eat. Like if you have uh, the afternoon, in the Sweden we have a thing called fika where it's like a little... Mm -hmm. um yeah, yeah have a little bun some coffee in the afternoon and um, for some it can be super like if they want to stay away from sugar for instance it can be quite tricky to do so if everyone else is having that uh, little uh, baked goods um but you know it's uh, it's uh, it's tricky and we like we need to remember that we are humans and it's not like a failure to take a afternoon treat every now and then it's not it doesn't make us bad per people or bad characters like we are humans and we need to just find find ways of making us feel good um, a question about, um, you know, when's the best time to eat breakfast, lunch, snacks and all that. And also related to snacks, like, you know, in America, there's a very heavy snacking culture, I feel, whereas in some countries, it's just three square meals a day. What do you think of timing the meals? I mean, the timing is so individual, too. It all depends on, like, your daily schedule and how your day looks. Uh, so finding a way there, it also like that works for you. For some, it can be really helpful to eat like every third hour, like having breakfast and then having a smaller snack and then having lunch and then having a smaller mm -hmm. snack and then there. And for some, it like it's enough to have two meals per day or even one meal. Uh, so it's really about finding what works for you. And I mean, we shouldn't even like we shouldn't compare ourselves too much with others. For some, some might eat like six smaller meals uh, during the day, and others might eat three larger meals. So. It's not. Uh, it's not. We're not. It's not a competition on who eats the most or who eats the fewest meals per day. So it's just about finding like what works for you and that are aligned with your goal preferences and individual requirements uh, of nutrients and energy. So mm -hmm. there's not like one size that fits all or one way that's better yeah. than the other. It's just finding something that uh, works for you. Right. Um, next question relates to junk food. And I, I, I also agree that sometimes I feel like if you eat junk food, it makes you more hungry. So they, they might put additives in there that make you, you know, it just doesn't satisfy you sometimes. Yeah. No. And that's the reason because they like it's very low in nutrients. It's often very low in protein. It's very low in fiber. And those are the, like the protein and fiber helps us stay fuller. So when when the meals we eat are like lack those components, we tend to get more hungry. And also young food also have an evil little thing that they have like a perfect combination of 
so much sweetness and so much salt. So we just want more. So it like just tells our body like we want to eat more of this because we're not like we're not uh, we haven't had enough. It's because they hit that sweet spot where we just crave more and more. So like if you're like if you're still are going to like one of those fast food restaurants, like try to order some vegetables on the side to get all like some fiber in or like take some extra protein um, and to get more protein as well mm -hmm. uh, to avoid that. Uh, because it can really make us uh, crave more food and that's what they want. That's the thing. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a yeah. bit new. Um, another question relates to water intake. Should we be kind of like monitoring our water, water intake or not? I mean, the water intake, there is like a general recommendation, or but it's it's quite vague too, because we 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 need different amount of water depending on our body composition, like activity level, even the climate that we live in um, is dependent on, or like the, our water requirement is dependent on what climate we live in. So, I mean, we have a really good signal if we are healthy uh, individuals, our body is very good at signaling when we need water because we feel thirst. Uh, but it can be quite like some people can still forget to drink and then like they lack that feeling and then they start to get like a headache and feel dizzy and like maybe they eat food instead when they actually are thirsty. So it can be great to like track your water intake just to see like okay how much water do I drink per day do I think that's enough um, am I working out like then I might need more water am I sweating a lot I might need warm water. Um, so I mean it's I mean, it's a general guideline guidance is to like drink at least. Uh, two liters of water per day, but that's included like all water that you get from um, from like foods and uh, like from tea, from fruits, vegetables, all of those have quite a lot of uh, water as well. So that's included in that too. Mm -hmm. um, okay, next questions about the best way to prepare food to optimize the nutritional value. Yeah, that's a good question, I think. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's uh, quite fun like too, because here it's like of course the neutral uh, value of the food will vary depending on how you cook it like in general like the many nutrients are higher in raw in the raw format of the food like for if, if you take a carrot for instance uh, most um, minerals and vitamins are available uh, the highest when it's is in the raw form but some also uh, get more available when it's cooked so it's like that's also a thing like it's good to vary both the intake of different types of food, but also to vary the way of preparing the foods. So it can be great to like, I mean, eat some raw carrots and then you eat some boiled carrots or some roasted carrots as well with some fat, because then you can absorb the fat soluble vitamins uh, better. So in general, like, uh, but the general rule is like prepare vegetables maybe as less as possible, but it doesn't mean that we always should eat just a raw, raw salad. Um, of course, we can eat like roasted things or boiled things. Uh, but I would say like in general as well, like if you fry things, like don't fry it in so much oil. Um, aim at like being a bit gentle to the food uh, that you're eating. Mm -hmm. I would say. Um, and then you can also like boosting. Yeah. Thing. yeah, sorry. <laughs> but if you, for instance, are eating a plant-based uh, meal, you can like boost your um, your body's uh, way of absorbing like the iron from it. So by adding some vitamin C, like some things that are rich in vitamin C, for instance, because that can enhance the absorption of iron. So it's uh, small things that you can do. But mm -hmm. yeah. Um, question about um, vegan diet. And mm -hmm. um, is that, and also I think the same person is asking about eating just meat only, not not so much keto, but um, yeah. what the is carnivore, a carnivore diet. diet? Yeah. but I. I think it's the same take that we should have a variety as much as possible. But yeah, Definitely. over to you. Yeah. yeah, I'm a bit scared when I see. I mean, it's quite trendy, like on TikTok and Instagram, with this uh, some people that have the carnival diet, and those are eating like just meat all the time. And just by uh, like the World Health Organization actually lowered the recommended amount of red meat that we should aim at eating per week. So. Right now, it's actually 400 grams per week maximum in order to decrease the risk for um, stomach cancer, because if we eat more than that, it will increase the risk of stomach cancer. So um, yeah, aim at at least staying below that level. And as you said, so like it's all about moderation and variation and getting a little bit of everything. Like you don't need to eat meat uh, at all. Um, and you can eat some meat as well and still have a healthy diet. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend anyone to eat just meat. 
Um, there's a question about kind of mental health and the connection to food and nutrition. Maybe you want to say a little bit more about how the role of food to our mental health. Yeah, but it's so important for us. Like if it's been shown that like if you eat just a lot of junk food and a lot of those nutrient poor foods, like it is more common to uh, get like mental illnesses and like you get more the likelihood of getting depression or Alzheimer's or all those diseases actually increase. So like the having a balanced and healthy diet can actually help prevent diseases in so many different levels, both like mental diseases, physical diseases and cognitive diseases. So it's it's really uh, important. Yeah. Um, another question about uh, what diet is best between the DASH diet and the Mediterranean diet? Yeah, it's a good question because those diets are very, very similar. It's just mm -hmm. that they have basically like different names. Um, but the DASH diet is really focused as well on the sodium um, intake because the DASH diet is to stop hypertension, so high blood pressure. Uh, and then we want to uh, eat less sodium and by focus on, because both of these diets focuses on like lots of vegetables and fiber, fruits, uh, whole grains, uh, unsaturated fats, um, some fish, some eggs, like, but lower the intake of red meat here again, red, uh, limit the intake of uh, saturated fats and sugars. So that's very common. So they're very, very um, um, common and are common. They're very like, I like these two diets. Mm -hmm. um, both are great, I would say, because you can have a really balanced intake from both. Great. And I think um, one one more question um, about kind of eating before going to bed. A lot of people say you should eat earlier and not so late. What do you, what's your take on that? No, but that's also like really um, individual, actually. I mean, some people really prefer to feel a bit full when they go to bed, but others feel like they, um, they can't have a meal um, like closer than a couple of hours before going to bed because that can uh, interact with their sleep habits. I mean, and in general, it is preferable to like at least have some uh, span between the last meal and the, the eating or the sleep uh, when the sleep starts. So, I mean, but that's also like it's so individual. But if you, you can try, try to like stop eating a couple of hours before uh, you go to bed and see how that affects your sleep. Um, because it can actually surprisingly help quite a lot, um, especially mm -hmm. like certain types. If you eat like a lot of sugar before going to bed, it can actually really impact uh, your sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's all about what you eat as well. But for some, some people need to have like their, their last meal quite close uh, to going to bed. Like if you, for instance, worked out uh, late during the night and then you need to have some post-workout snack or something. But it can also, like it's all about what you choose uh, as your meal then as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have one question in regards to kind of you mentioned about unsaturated fats are better than saturated fats. Can you give some examples of what's unsaturated versus saturated? Yes. So the unsaturated fat is, is like a general rule is like those are in fluid form uh, when it's in room temperature uh, and the saturated ones are like firm. So the saturated one is from animal sources uh, mostly uh, such as butter, uh, cream, uh, cheese, um, also palm oil and also coconut oil is also saturated fats mm -hmm. and it's also found in like bacon, meats, but then we have the unsaturated fat which is found in like olive oil, canola oil, uh, nuts, seeds, avocado and those are really beneficial for our health um, and supports like uh, cardiovascular health and disease prevention. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. So one uh, last question about cholesterol and, um, you know, what is, um, let me just see about the question. So this says that uh, many now are claiming that high cholesterol readings are normal, heart attacks among people on statins, and those who are not are minimal. Uh, in fact, high LDL is needed for a healthy brain. So I guess it's regards to kind of fat consumption. I mean, I, I think what I can say as a physician is that like the, the LDL is like considered the bad cholesterol. Um, and so, and also please consult your physician about these matters with regards to what's the ideal uh, cholesterol reading that you should have. Definitely. But yeah, over to you, Sydney. 
Yeah, no, but that's true. I mean, we we have seen like a high level of LDL is correlated with like um, a larger prevalence of uh, diseases, and the good HDL uh, cholesterol are helping to lower those LDL cholesterol levels uh, to keep them in a healthy range. But I mean, we do have some uh, some levels of cholesterol, but like as you said, like consult with your physician or healthcare professional um, to check if your levels are within a good healthy range. Yeah. Um, one question we like with regards to sugar. Um, well, how much sugar is allowed, as well as what other sugar alternatives? What about sugar alternatives? Are they really like more healthy, or should we just avoid that? Yeah. So I mean, it's in general it's recommended to eat less than ten of your energy percentage from uh, go from added sugar, and it's preferably to keep it below five energy percentage. And energy percentage is the percentage of the energy that you consume in a day. Um, so I mean, we could try to keep it as low as possible because it doesn't provide any health benefits at all. Like plain sugar doesn't provide anything else than just energy and sugar to our body, uh, which we just aim at having at low amounts. Uh, so that's uh, my take on sugar and I mean sugar is hidden in so many different food as well like it's found in so many like weird condiments and uh, sauces like different things um, like pre-made meals and like as we talked to about previously too about in fast food there's so much uh, sugar added in that too so it's found in so many different ways so it's not just like from candy or ice cream that we are like we actually see the sugar but it's in so many more things as well. And how yeah. about sugar alternatives? Are they like any better or not really? So it's it also like depends here. Um, so like if it's if it's between the sugar alternatives and the sugar, then yes, the sugar alternatives might be better. But I mean, if it's about eating uh, a whole food like vegetables or like sugar alternative uh, chocolate bar, like then yes, I would say the vegetable will provide you with more healthy nutrients than that. Um, um, chocolate bar that's sweetened with uh, a sugar alternative mm -hmm. so it's also like but it's also about like comparing yeah comparing what to what um mm -hmm. yeah, and, good point, um, yeah like yeah so and like for the, the, those sugar alcohols it can really be some people are very sensitive to them too so it's like it has a laxative effect as well uh, on our body and we can get a lot of st stomach aches and stuff um so yeah mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, sorry, we're going to close here. We just have one uh, final question about, like, uh, again, cholesterol. Do you have to take tablets for cholesterol or can you eat properly and exercise? I think definitely healthy lifestyle is going to help, but definitely you should consult your physician as well, yeah. whether you need definitely. medication or not. Yeah, yeah definitely. But yeah. I mean, our diet is very, we can um, help, of course, to manage the cholesterol level through our diet, like eating a lot of whole grains, fiber, and like exercising and uh, lower the, um, the intake of saturated fats. Uh, but yeah. as you said, like always consult with your healthcare professional uh, with your, if you need any medication. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much, Signe. I think uh, just a final plug for Life Sum. I think Signe mentioned that even if you don't have the full license, uh, you can still use um, their product, correct? Um, just as a free, just set up an account and start using it. And so I think we've put it in a chat stream. Um, and um, yeah, and if you guys have any further questions, just feel free to email us as well and we can pass it on to Signe to answer them um, or get back to you. The other thing I wanted to make a plug for is that um, our section actually coordinates um, a, a, like a, you know, like a, a frequent global health challenge uh, where we encourage everyone to walk like 10,000 steps a day with an app and all that. So look out for that. We just started one um, like uh, a few weeks ago and we'll probably have one in a few months time. So that's our global health challenge. Um, but Sene, thank you so much. Uh, this is really helpful. And I think it's really great to um, just understand the connection of food and to so much different parts of our life um, and just to have a balanced uh, life as well as you know eat variety of food and also know know yourself know your body I think that's kind of the key messages that I'm getting from you um, but thank you so much yeah they're really helpful thank and I too. hope we, maybe we can have you back again uh, to speak to us and meet I us again yeah thank and you thank so much you everybody questions were really great question asked yeah. yeah and from every around the world so you know spread yeah. the message of uh, you know a healthy life and um, you know a balanced life
So thank you, everybody, and uh, appreciate you coming on today, and we'll see you for the next Public Health Conversation Series. Thank you, Signet. Take care. Thank Have you. a good day, everybody. Okay, bye.